Improve your English through stories. Emma Woodhouse was pretty, smart, and wealthy. She lived in the village of Highbury, 16 miles away from London. At almost 21, she thought her life was perfect. However, life changes, and even the most perfect life has to adapt. Emma, the younger of two daughters, lived with her father in Highbury. Her sister Isabella lived in London with her husband and five children. Emma's mother died when she was five, and Mr. Woodhouse, her father, brought in Miss Taylor to be their teacher and friend. Miss Taylor stayed with them even after Emma grew up. But things changed when Miss Taylor decided to marry Mr. Weston. Emma and her father were left alone, missing Miss Taylor's presence. Despite Mr. Woodhouse's sadness, Emma tried to make him feel better. Mr. Knightley, a family friend, visited and asked about the wedding. Emma assured him it went well, but there were no tears. Mr. Knightley expressed understanding of Emma's sadness. Mr. Woodhouse hoped Emma wouldn't make more matches that would change their circle of friends and family. However, Emma was convinced she played a role in Miss Taylor's marriage and had an idea for another match, this time with Mr. Elton, the vicar. Mr. Knightley disagreed with Emma, believing her success was just luck. Undeterred, Emma was set on matchmaking again, this time with Harriet Smith a young friend she met during a card-playing evening at Hartfield. Harriet was impressed by Emma and enjoyed the better surroundings at Hartfield. Emma, in turn, decided to introduce Harriet into good society. They spent time together, and Harriet shared details about her school friend Elizabeth Martin and her family, including Mr. Robert Martin, a kind and clever single man. Emma, curious about Mr. Martin, asked Harriet to tell her more about him. Harriet spoke highly of Mr. Martin, and Emma found herself interested in his character. Emma believed that a farmer like Mr. Martin was not a suitable friend for Harriet. Instead, she thought the vicar, Mr. Elton, would make a much better husband. During their conversation, Emma steered away from talking about Mr. Martin. She tried to highlight the differences between Mr. Martin and Mr. Elton, emphasizing that Mr. Elton was a perfect gentleman. Emma then shared with Harriet how Mr. Elton had praised her beauty, making Harriet pleased and less interested in Mr. Martin. Emma suggested painting a picture of Harriet, and Mr. Elton enthusiastically supported the idea. However, the painting session became challenging as Mr. Elton's questions and movements made it difficult for Emma to focus. Eventually, Emma asked him to read to them instead. When the painting was finished, opinions about its accuracy differed. Mrs. Weston thought it made Harriet look too beautiful, but Mr. Elton insisted it was accurate. Emma, pleased with Mr. Elton's interest, started seeing the possibility of a match between him and Harriet. However, Harriet's mention of Mr. Martin the next day worried Emma. Harriet excitedly shared that Mr. Martin had written to propose marriage. Emma saw the letter and agreed it was well written. Yet, she wondered if Mr. Martin's sister had helped him. Harriet sought Emma's advice on how to respond to Mr. Martin's proposal. Emma, reluctant to give direct advice, encouraged Harriet to make her own decision. Harriet, feeling the weight of the decision, expressed surprise at Mr. Martin's feelings for her. Realizing the gravity of Harriet's decision, Emma decided to intervene and guide her away from what she considered an unsuitable marriage. She advised Harriet to decline Mr. Martin's proposal if she had any doubts or couldn't immediately say yes. Harriet, trusting Emma's judgment, agreed to refuse Mr. Martin. Emma emphasized their social differences, stating that Mr. Martin, being a farmer, wasn't on the same social level as them. She even mentioned that if Harriet married him, Emma couldn't visit her. Harriet sent the letter, 
and that evening she seemed a bit quiet. Emma tried to cheer her up by talking about Mr. Elton, predicting his reactions when he saw Harriet's picture. The next day, Mr. Knightley congratulated Emma on transforming Harriet into a more refined young woman. Emma thought he meant news about Mr. Elton but was surprised when he revealed that Mr. Martin had sought his opinion about marrying Harriet. Emma informed Mr. Knightley that Harriet had already refused Mr. Martin. However, Mr. Knightley became angry, accusing Emma of influencing Harriet's decision. Emma defended herself, arguing that Mr. Martin wasn't Harriet's equal and that she had improved Harriet's understanding of society. Mr. Knightley disagreed, warning Emma that sensible men wouldn't want silly wives and that Harriet might not get another chance to marry. Emma was unhappy with Mr. Knightley's anger but remained firm in her belief. She denied any intention of matching Harriet with Mr. Elton and Mr. Knightley cautioned her that Mr. Elton would seek a wife with money and a good family. Emma laughed off the suggestion, hoping to ease the tension. Emma noticed that Mr. Knightley remained angry for some time, and it took a while before he visited Hartfield again. When he did, Emma could sense that he had not forgiven her, which saddened her. Despite this, she believed her plan was working as Mr. Elton continued to show signs of affection toward Harriet. Every time Mr. Elton met Harriet and Emma, he seemed to sigh more, leading Emma to believe he truly loved Harriet. Harriet, meanwhile, was creating a book of poems, and Emma suggested that Mr. Elton write something for it. Initially reluctant, Mr. Elton surprised them by leaving a short love poem at Hartfield, addressed to Miss Harriet. Harriet was thrilled with the poem and concluded that Mr. Elton was genuinely in love with her. When Mr. Woodhouse heard the poem, he considered it the best they had found. The conversation shifted to Isabella's upcoming visit and the Christmas celebrations. Emma invited Harriet to join them mentioning that it would be a memorable Christmas. The next day, Emma and Harriet visited a poor, sick family in the village. On their way back, they passed Mr. Elton's house, and Harriet saw it for the first time. She admired the house and envisioned Emma going there with her book of poems. The idea pleased Emma, and they continued their walk. As they walked, they encountered Mr. Elton coming out of his house. Emma seized the opportunity to let Harriet and Mr. Elton walk together and pretended to check her boot. While they seemed engaged in conversation, Emma hoped Mr. Elton would express his feelings to Harriet. However, the opportunity passed without Mr. Elton revealing his love. Despite this setback, Emma felt they were getting closer to the day when Harriet and Mr. Elton would marry. Isabella, along with her family, arrived at Hartfield a week before Christmas. The family enjoyed being together, discussing friends in Highbury and Mr. and Mrs. Weston. Isabella inquired about Mrs. Weston, and Mr. Woodhouse sadly mentioned that she didn't visit often and always left again expressing concern for poor Mr. Weston. Emma teased her father, Mr. Woodhouse, about Mrs. Weston not visiting more often now that she was married. The conversation shifted to Mr. Weston's son, Frank Churchill, whom nobody in Highbury had seen yet. Frank had been adopted by Mr. and Mrs. Churchill when his mother passed away, taking their family name. Despite his annual visits to London, he had not yet met his new stepmother. The possibility of Frank finally coming to Highbury excited everyone, especially Emma. Mr. Woodhouse shared that he had seen a letter from Frank to Mrs. Weston, describing him as a pleasant young man. Emma regretted that Frank wasn't there to meet her sister Isabella. Mrs. Weston invited the family to Randall's for Christmas Eve dinner, including Harriet, Mr. Knightley, and Mr. Elton.
Two carriages were arranged, and Mr. Woodhouse planned to meet Mr. Elton at his house and take him to Randall's. The day before the dinner, Harriet fell ill with a cough and a sore throat, forcing her to miss the event. Emma explained the situation to Mr. Elton, expecting him to be disappointed. However, he surprised her by expressing his sympathy for Harriet and still looking forward to the evening. During the journey to Randall's, Mr. Elton seemed happy, even joking a little. Emma noticed that he appeared to have forgotten about Harriet and was enjoying himself. When they arrived, Emma was surprised to find Mr. Elton constantly at her side. At dinner, Emma sat next to Mr. Weston, who expressed a wish for Harriet and Frank to be present. He shared that they had received another letter from Frank, assuring them he would visit in a fortnight. Mrs. Weston was doubtful, but Mr. Weston believed in his son's arrival. Emma, wanting to meet Frank, sided with Mr. Weston hoping he was right. The evening at Randall's was pleasant, and as they left for home, it began to snow. The first carriage carried Mr. Woodhouse, Isabella, and John, while Emma contemplated the upcoming visit of Frank Churchill. As Emma and Mr. Elton traveled alone in the second carriage, having just driven through the gates and reached the road, an unexpected and unsettling incident occurred. Suddenly, Mr. Elton jumped up from his seat, moving next to Emma, and took her hand in his. Concerned, Emma immediately shifted away and asked Mr. Elton to stop, fearing he might have had too much of Mr. Weston's excellent wine. However, Mr. Elton persisted, declaring his love for her and claiming he would die if she refused to marry him. Despite Emma's discomfort, Mr. Elton continued his advances. He asserted that it was Emma he loved, not Harriet Smith. Emma, bewildered, questioned his intentions, mentioning the painting and the poem dedicated to Harriet. Mr. Elton insisted that Harriet meant nothing to him, expressing admiration for the artist, Emma, rather than the subject, Harriet. He attempted to take Emma's hand again, but she resisted. Emma, still surprised, struggled to find words. Mr. Elton tried once more to take her hand, interpreting her silence as understanding. He then concluded that they both made a mistake and declared that he no longer wished her to have any interest in him. Emma, firm in her response, asserted that she did not intend to marry anyone at present. After this awkward encounter, they sat in silence until the carriage stopped outside Mr. Elton's house. He got out, and with a cold exchange of good nights, the carriage continued, taking Emma home to Hartfield, where her family awaited her. During that night, Emma found it hard to sleep. She wasn't worried about what occurred in the carriage with Mr. Elton, but she felt very sad for her friend Harriet. Harriet had grown to like and then love Mr. Elton, and Emma blamed herself for it. Emma recalled Mr. Knightley's words in the garden, where he had said Mr. Elton would choose sensibly. It turned out he was right. Mr. Elton didn't want Harriet. It was Emma he was interested in. Emma acknowledged her mistake in trying to bring two people together. The next day, Emma was happy to see a lot of snow because it meant she couldn't go to church and see Mr. Elton or visit Harriet. The snow stayed for several days, and the only visitor to Hartfield was Mr. Knightley. When the snow disappeared, Isabella, John, and the children went back to London. One evening, a letter arrived for Mr. Woodhouse from Mr. Elton. It mentioned that he was leaving Highbury the next day to spend some weeks with friends in Bath. Emma was a bit angry that there was no message for her in the letter, but she was also pleased that he was going away. Emma knew the next thing she had to do was talk to Harriet and explain everything. Harriet cried, but she didn't blame Emma for what happened. They returned to Hartfield together, and Emma tried her best to make Harriet feel better.
knowing that only time could help her forget. There was hope that when Mr. Elton returned, they could all meet without feeling embarrassed. However, Mr. Frank Churchill didn't come. He sent a letter of excuse. This added another layer of intrigue and disappointment to the story. In the next part of the story, Mr. Frank Churchill, who had previously sent an excuse for not visiting Randall's, expressed his hope to come there soon. However, both Mr. and Mrs. Weston were sorry but decided that perhaps spring would be a better time for his visit, and he might stay for a longer duration. Emma shared this news with Mr. Knightley and expressed her dissatisfaction, blaming the Churchills, especially Frank's aunt. However, Mr. Knightley did not agree with her, stating that at Frank's age, 23 or 24, it's not impossible for him to visit. He mentioned that Frank had been in Weymouth recently, indicating he could leave the Churchills when he wanted. Emma couldn't understand Mr. Knightley's strong feelings against Frank Churchill. She suggested that maybe Frank was just a kind and gentle man, considering the possibility that he didn't want to make his aunt unhappy. However, Mr. Knightley expressed his frustration, stating that Frank seemed like a very weak young man who excelled at writing letters and making excuses, and Mrs. Weston must feel insulted because he hadn't come to meet her. Emma believed that Frank would come soon, causing excitement in Highbury, and everyone was interested in meeting him. However, Mr. Knightley seemed indifferent, emphasizing that he rarely thought about Frank from one month to another. Emma and Harriet were out walking one morning, and Emma, feeling they had discussed Mr. Elton enough for one day, decided to visit the Bates family. The Bates, though quite poor, loved having visitors, and they were delighted to see Emma and Harriet. They engaged in conversation, asking about their old friend Mr. Woodhurst and inquiring if Emma had heard from Miss Fairfax recently. In this part of the story, we learn more about Jane Fairfax, who was Miss Bates's niece. Jane's parents died when she was young, and she came to Highbury to live with her grandmother and aunt. Later, a friend of her father, Mr. Campbell, offered to take care of her, and Jane moved to live with the Campbell family, who were rich. Mrs. and Miss Bates were sad when she left Highbury, but they knew it was better for her to be with the Campbells. Jane regularly wrote letters to her aunt and grandmother and sometimes visited them. Emma and Jane were of similar age but were never friends. Emma found Jane's letters boring and wasn't interested in her life. Miss Bates, however, enjoyed sharing news about Jane with everyone in Highbury. There is excitement when Jane's visit is announced. She plans to stay for three months, and the Bates family is thrilled. Jane's visit coincides with the Campbell family's trip to Ireland, and she decides not to travel due to a recent cold. During a pleasant evening at Hartfield, where both Emma and Jane play and sing, Emma finds it difficult to engage in conversation with Jane, who seems quiet and a bit cold. Emma recalls Jane spending time in Weymouth the previous summer and asks if she met Mr. Frank Churchill. Jane remains reserved about him. The next day, news spreads that Mr. Elton is getting married to a Miss Hawkins from Bath. Emma is surprised as it has only been four weeks since he left Highbury. Miss Bates shares the news, expressing joy, and Emma responds without much interest. Later, Harriet visits Emma and reveals that she saw Elizabeth Martin and her brother in a shop in Highbury, creating suspense about what might have happened. Harriet excitedly shares an encounter with Elizabeth Martin and her brother. They whispered together for a while, and then, approaching Emma, they shook hands and talked for some time. Despite the rain stopping, Harriet didn't want to leave the pleasant conversation, and now she's with Emma, narrating the experience. Harriet seeks Emma's opinion on her actions, asking if she did the right thing. Emma, considering the positive impact of the meeting on Harriet, 
reassures her that she behaved perfectly. Emma points out that since it was a chance meeting, it won't happen again for some time. Harriet, overwhelmed with happiness about seeing Mr. Martin again, finds it difficult to talk about anything else. Emma notes that the news about Mr. Elton doesn't seem to shock Harriet as much after her joyful encounter with the Martins. The meeting served as a pleasant distraction for Harriet. Mr. Elton returned to Highbury a happy man, having found himself a future wife, Augusta Hawkins, from a wealthy family with £10,000. Emma only saw him briefly before he left for Bath again, but Harriet, always crossing paths with him, seemed to witness his apparent love. Emma hoped that with the arrival of Frank Churchill, Mr. Elton would be talked about less. When Mr. and Mrs. Weston shared the good news that Frank was coming early and staying for a fortnight, Emma was delighted. She anticipated finally meeting him. Upon his arrival, Frank proved to be handsome, sensible, and friendly. During their conversation, he inquired about Highbury, its activities, and society. Mr. Weston seemed to hope for a match between Emma and Frank, but Emma's initial good opinion of Frank wavered when she learned he went to London just to get his hair cut, which she found less than sensible. Despite Emma's reservations, everyone in Highbury regarded Frank as a fine young man, with the exception of Mr. Knightley. Mr. Knightley's opinion on Frank's trip to London was unsurprising to Emma. However, Frank returned that evening, having had his hair cut, and laughed off the matter. Emma began to think there was nothing wrong with it after all. In other news, Mr. and Mrs. Cole, neighbors with a large and beautiful house, were hosting a dinner party. Emma, usually preferring to walk or ride, arrived in her carriage, much to Mr. Knightley's amusement. They entered the party together. During dinner, Emma sat next to Frank, discussing Highbury society. Jane Fairfax observed them, curious about their conversation. Later, when Frank joined the ladies in the drawing room, he sat next to Emma again, expressing his boredom with life at his aunt and uncle's. Harriet and other young ladies arrived, and Emma was pleased to see Harriet looking confident. Mrs. Weston revealed a plan to take Miss Bates and her niece, Jane, home in their carriage, suggesting Mr. Knightley had offered his. Emma doubted the match between Jane and Mr. Knightley, citing his contentment with his farm and library. Mrs. Weston disagreed, seeing it as a potential and suitable match but Emma remained unconvinced. During the party, Emma noticed Frank and Jane sitting together after some initial conversation. When Mr. Cole invited Emma to play the piano and sing, she agreed to perform a couple of songs before inviting Jane to play. As Emma sang, she observed Mr. Knightley listening attentively, causing her to ponder Mrs. Weston's remarks about a potential match between him and Jane. After Jane finished her songs, the idea of dancing was suggested, and the room quickly transformed. Mrs. Weston played the piano, and Frank took Emma's hand, leading her to the center of the room. As they danced, Emma searched for Mr. Knightley, knowing he wasn't fond of dancing. She speculated that if he danced with Jane, it might signify something. However, she found him engaged in conversation with Mrs. Cole, and Jane was asked to dance by another man. Enjoying the dances with Frank, Emma felt a sense of disappointment when the evening came to an end. Frank escorted her to her carriage, expressing gratitude for the dance and suggesting that dancing with Jane wouldn't have been as enjoyable. The evening at Mr. and Mrs. Cole's house had left a lasting impression on Emma and Frank Churchill. Frank, enthralled by the dancing, spent the next day contemplating how to organize more dance gatherings. The idea evolved, and when Mr. Woodhouse and Emma visited Randall's the following evening, 
Frank proposed the notion of continuing the dancing at Randall's with the same guests and music. The plan expanded, and soon they considered inviting more people, but the limited space at Randall's posed a challenge. Undeterred, Frank suggested the Crown Inn as an alternative, with a larger room and an additional space for dinner. After examining the rooms at the Crown, they sought Miss Bates's opinion, and the consensus was that the Crown Inn was the ideal venue. As excitement built around the upcoming ball, preparations were underway. However, just days before the event, a letter from Mrs. Churchill interrupted their plans. She was severely ill, and Frank had to return home immediately. Emma, saddened by the news, bid farewell to their ball preparations, and Frank, before leaving, expressed the difficulty of saying goodbye. Despite the unexpected turn of events, Frank promised to return, and Emma reassured him that they would have their ball eventually. He made a brief visit to Miss Bates and Miss Fairfax before his departure, expressing his gratitude for the wonderful time he had spent in Highbury. As he left, Emma couldn't help but wonder if he might be in love with her. After Frank Churchill's departure, Emma found her life quieter, and she reflected on her feelings in her diary, admitting that she might be a little in love with him. However, as time passed and she received updates from Mrs. Weston and read his letters, Emma realized she was not truly unhappy without him. In the midst of this, Mr. Elton and his new wife, Mrs. Elton, arrived in Highbury, stirring conversations and concerns. Harriet, particularly, was distressed about encountering them. Despite Emma's initial dislike for Mrs. Elton, she felt compelled to pay a visit to their home. Mrs. Elton, although well-dressed, didn't impress Emma as a true lady, appearing too comfortable and lacking elegance. When Mr. Elton entered the room during their visit, he seemed uncomfortable, and Emma couldn't help but think it was bad luck for him. The visit was brief, and Mr. and Mrs. Elton reciprocated by visiting Hartfield. Mrs. Elton's conversation revolved around her brother and sister and their house, continually comparing it to Hartfield. Emma's opinion of Mrs. Elton declined even further during this encounter. Mrs. Elton, with her excessive talking and intrusive suggestions, proposed starting a musical society in Highbury. Emma, unenthusiastically, went along with the idea. The arrival of Mr. and Mrs. Elton added a new dynamic to Highbury, creating a mix of discomfort and amusement in the social scene. Mrs. Elton continued her enthusiastic chatter praising Mr. and Mrs. Weston as lovely people. She expressed her surprise at discovering Mrs. Weston's ladylike qualities, given that she was Mr. Weston's former teacher. Mrs. Elton then revealed that Mr. Knightley had arrived while they were at Randall's, describing him as a very good friend of Mr. Weston's and expressing her liking for him. Fortunately, it was time for Mr. and Mrs. Elton to leave providing relief for Emma, who found Mrs. Elton to be an awful and rude woman. Emma was puzzled by Mrs. Elton's perception of Mr. Knightley as a gentleman, and disagreed with her opinion of Mrs. Weston as a lady. Despite Mr. Woodhouse's kinder remarks about Mrs. Elton's appearance, Emma remained steadfast in her unfavorable opinion of her. Over the next few weeks, Emma's disdain for Mrs. Elton persisted. Mrs. Elton avoided Hartfield, likely aware of Emma's feelings towards her. However, Mrs. Elton became overly interested in Jane Fairfax, whom she considered in need of her assistance to gain entry into good society. Emma felt sorry for Jane, who was more elegant than Mrs. Elton could ever be. During a conversation at Randall's, Emma, Mrs. Weston, and Mr. Knightley discussed Jane's extended stay in Highbury. Mrs. Weston wondered why Jane chose to stay, considering she would have to spend time with Mrs. Elton.
Mr. Knightley suggested that Jane might prefer being away from her aunt and grandmother occasionally. Mrs. Weston hinted at Emma's affection for Jane, leading Mr. Knightley to tease Emma about matchmaking him with Jane. However, Emma clarified that she had no intention of matchmaking Mr. Knightley, stating that she had never thought of him being in love with Jane. After Mr. Knightley left, Emma and Mrs. Weston discussed the possibility of him marrying Jane. Mrs. Weston thought Mr. Knightley's attempts to deny any romantic interest might indicate otherwise, and she wouldn't be surprised if he was in love with Jane Fairfax after all. Highbury was abuzz with excitement as everyone sought to entertain Mr. and Mrs. Elton. Dinner parties and evening gatherings were organized for the newlyweds, who received numerous invitations and rarely spent an evening at home. Emma felt compelled to host a dinner at Hartfield for them to avoid giving the impression that she disliked Mrs. Elton. Deciding on the guest list was easy, with the Westons and Mr. Knightley being obvious choices. However, Emma needed an eighth person, and though she initially thought of inviting Harriet, she understood Harriet's hesitation and decided to invite Jane Fairfax instead. Emma felt a responsibility to be a better friend to Jane, especially after Mr. Knightley's words about Jane spending time with Mrs. Elton due to a lack of other invitations. The invitations were met with positive responses, and there was an unexpected addition to the guest list. Isabella's two eldest boys, brought by Mr. John Knightley. On the day of the dinner party, everyone arrived on time, and Mr. Weston, who had been away on business in London, hoped to join them later in the evening. The guests engaged in conversations, and Mr. John Knightley and his sons had encountered Jane Fairfax earlier that day when she had gone to the post office. Mrs. Elton, displaying her lively nature, insisted that Jane should no longer fetch her own letters, as Mrs. Elton would arrange for them to be delivered along with her own. As dinner was served, Emma took Jane's arm, and they walked into the dining room together, creating an appearance of being the best of friends. Later, Mr. Weston arrived, bringing a letter from Frank Churchill. He shared the news that Frank would be coming to Highbury next month, as the Churchills planned to stay in Richmond, only nine miles away. The prospect of Frank's return and the revival of plans for the postponed ball filled Mrs. Weston with joy, surprising Emma with her own excitement at the news. Mrs. Elton, who had never met Frank Churchill, expressed her delight at his return to Highbury, mentioning the opportunity for him to meet a new neighbor. Emma reflected on her interactions with Frank and hoped that his feelings for her had diminished during his absence. When Frank returned to Highbury for the day after the Churchill's arrival in Richmond, Emma observed that he seemed happy to see her but appeared less in love. Frank's behavior on the day of the ball further indicated a change in his feelings. Although happy to be with Emma, he spent considerable time attending to other guests and showing excitement about the arrival of different carriages. He was attentive to Miss Bates and Jane Fairfax, ensuring they did not get wet in the rain. However, Emma noticed that Mr. Knightley, while standing with the older men, did not dance and appeared serious, except for occasional smiles at her. As the dancing commenced, Emma enjoyed the evening but felt saddened by Mr. Knightley's reluctance to dance and apparent lack of enthusiasm for Frank Churchill. The last two dances before dinner were about to begin, and Harriet found herself without a partner. Emma observed Mr. Elton, who seemed to intentionally avoid asking Harriet to dance. Instead, he engaged in conversation with others, completely ignoring Harriet leaving her as the only young lady sitting down. Emma was puzzled by this sudden change in behavior. Disappointment. Harriet revealed that she had no plans to marry. Emma, surprised, inquired about Harriet's feelings for Mr. Martin, the farmer who had proposed to her. Harriet admitted that she still liked him, 
but she couldn't marry him. Confused, Emma asked for an explanation, and Harriet confessed that she was not interested in marrying Mr. Martin because she had fallen in love with someone else. The revelation stunned Emma, who pressed Harriet to reveal the object of her affections. Harriet hesitated but finally disclosed that she was in love with Mr. Knightley. Emma was shocked and tried to convince Harriet that such a match was unlikely, given Mr. Knightley's social standing and age. However, Harriet was adamant about her feelings. Concerned about the situation, Emma decided to visit Mr. Knightley to gauge his sentiments toward Harriet. During their conversation, Emma subtly probed Mr. Knightley's thoughts on marriage and age differences in relationships. Mr. Knightley expressed his opinion that substantial age gaps were not ideal in marriages, unwittingly influencing Emma's perspective on Harriet's romantic hopes. Feeling a sense of responsibility for Harriet's misguided affections, Emma resolved to navigate the situation carefully. The revelation of Harriet's feelings for Mr. Knightley added another layer of complexity to Emma's role as a matchmaker, and she pondered the potential consequences of her previous actions. Emma, Harriet, and Mr. Knightley continued their walk, enjoying the beautiful day in Mr. Knightley's gardens. However, the absence of Frank Churchill, who had been invited by Mr. Weston, became a topic of concern during the lunchtime. Mrs. Weston expressed her worry about Frank's delay and suggested that they should start the picnic without him. Mr. Knightley agreed, and the group settled down for lunch. As they enjoyed the food and each other's company, the conversation revolved around the absent guest. Mrs. Elton, who had taken charge of organizing the picnic, was displeased by Frank's absence and voiced her disappointment. Mr. Knightley, always straightforward, made a remark about the gypsy party turning into a more ordinary one due to Frank's non-appearance. As the conversation continued, Mrs. Weston's concern deepened, and she suggested that perhaps something had happened to Frank. Mr. Knightley reassured her that Frank was likely delayed for some reason and would eventually arrive. In the midst of the conversation, they noticed a group of people approaching. To everyone's relief, Frank Churchill had finally arrived. His lateness was attributed to a temporary issue with his horse, which had caused the delay. The mood lightened as Frank joined the gathering, and they continued with their picnic plans. The party enjoyed the rest of the day, strolling through the picturesque landscapes, picking strawberries, and engaging in lively conversations. However, throughout the day, Mr. Knightley couldn't help but notice the interactions between Frank and Emma. While they seemed to enjoy each other's company, Mr. Knightley's growing unease about Frank's character and intentions lingered in the background. The atmosphere at Box Hill during the picnic did not match the beautiful, sunny day. The group seemed to separate into different factions, and even attempts by Mr. Weston to bring them together were unsuccessful. Emma found the day dull, with Frank Churchill notably quiet and disengaged. As they sat down for their picnic lunch, things took a turn. Frank, seemingly making an effort to entertain Emma, proposed a game. Each person was instructed to say either one very clever thing, two quite clever things, or three very boring things, with the promise that Emma would laugh at all of them. Miss Bates, not immediately grasping the nature of the game, innocently offered to say three very boring things as soon as she opened her mouth. When she understood the implication, she looked hurt and embarrassed. Others remained silent, and Miss Bates awkwardly tried to assure everyone that she understood the game. The Eltons decided to leave, disapproving of such games, and soon Mr. Knightley, Jane Fairfax, and her aunt followed suit. Frank's behavior became more annoying, and Emma, developing a headache, welcomed the announcement that the carriages were ready.
The picnic at Box Hill turned out to be a rather unpleasant experience, leaving Emma disappointed and questioning Frank Churchill's recent change in behavior. The day, which should have been filled with enjoyment and laughter, instead highlighted the underlying tensions within the group. Feeling remorseful about her behavior towards Miss Bates during the Box Hill picnic, Emma decided to visit her the next morning. As she entered Miss Bates's room, she noticed Jane Fairfax leaving from the opposite door. Miss Bates welcomed Emma but her tone seemed less warm than usual. Emma inquired about Jane, and Miss Bates explained that Jane was suffering from an awful headache. She mentioned that Jane had spent the morning writing letters to the Campbells. Despite the hospitality of Miss Bates, Emma felt a subtle change in the atmosphere, possibly a consequence of her thoughtless actions during the recent outing. Emma, realizing the gravity of her mistake, resolved not to repeat such behavior. The incident at Box Hill served as a lesson and Emma hoped to mend any strained relationships caused by her thoughtless words. Mr. Knightley confronts Emma about her unkind treatment of Miss Bates during the Box Hill outing. Emma initially tries to downplay the seriousness of her actions, but Mr. Knightley sternly points out the cruelty and insensitivity of her behavior. He emphasizes that Miss Bates, while perhaps not as wealthy or clever as Emma, is a good person who does not deserve such mistreatment. Mr. Knightley's disappointment and disapproval affect Emma deeply, and she recognizes the gravity of her mistake. The journey back to Hartfield is filled with a sense of remorse, with Emma feeling angry with herself and ashamed for her thoughtless words. This moment marks a turning point in the story leading Emma to reflect on her behavior and strive to become a better person. The plot takes a dramatic turn with the revelation from Mrs. Weston that Frank Churchill and Jane Fairfax have been secretly engaged since they met in Weymouth the previous October. Emma is shocked and surprised by this revelation, especially considering her own romantic history with Frank. Mrs. Weston expresses her disappointment in Frank's behavior, particularly in how he treated Emma. Emma, however, assures Mrs. Weston that she has moved on from any romantic feelings she once had for Frank and has not felt that way for at least the last three months. This revelation adds complexity to the relationships in the story, and Emma's understanding of Frank's character is challenged. It also raises questions about the nature of Jane Fairfax's character and her reasons for keeping the engagement a secret. The dynamics between the characters are sure to evolve as the story unfolds. The plot unfolds with several significant revelations. Emma learns about the secret engagement between Jane Fairfax and Frank Churchill from Mrs. Weston. This revelation shocks Emma especially since she had previously thought that Frank might have feelings for her. Mrs. Weston expresses her disappointment in Frank's behavior, particularly his treatment of Emma. Emma decides to visit Miss Bates to apologize for her earlier rudeness and hurtful comments during the Box Hill outing. Meanwhile, Frank Churchill reveals the secret engagement to his father and then rushes to Hartfield to inform Emma. Frank explains that he had to keep the engagement a secret because of his aunt, but now that she has passed away, he can openly discuss his plans to marry Jane. The news has a significant impact on the characters, and Emma realizes the mistake she made in her assumptions about Frank. She also has to break the news to Harriet, who had been hoping for a romantic connection with Frank but learns that Emma was actually referring to Mr. Knightley. As the story progresses, it becomes clear that Emma has deeper feelings for Mr. Knightley than she initially acknowledged. The emotional turmoil intensifies as Emma grapples with her own romantic sentiments, the changing dynamics among her friends, and the various engagements unfolding in Highbury. Emma and Mr. Knightley confess their love for each other, leading to a joyful moment. Mr. Knightley Realizing that Emma has misunderstood his previous offer of comfort, 
expresses his deep affection for her. They share a tender moment, and Mr. Knightley proposes to Emma, who happily accepts. The news of their engagement is not immediately shared with Mr. Woodhouse, as they consider his potential concerns. To give Harriet some time away from Highbury, Emma suggests to her sister, Isabella, that she invite Harriet to London. Emma and Mr. Knightley enjoy their newfound happiness but decide to delay informing Mr. Woodhouse about their engagement, fearing it might upset him. As the story progresses, the focus shifts to the preparations for the upcoming wedding between Jane Fairfax and Frank Churchill. Emma and Mr. Knightley's engagement remains a secret, and the narrative explores the dynamics between the characters and the evolving relationships in Highbury. To Mr. Knightley's surprise and relief, Harriet accepted Robert Martin's proposal. Emma, though initially shocked, assured Mr. Knightley that she wasn't unhappy about the news, only surprised. Harriet and Robert's reunion and engagement marked an unexpected turn of events. Mr. Knightley, having played a part in bringing Robert and Harriet together, was pleased with the outcome. Emma, on the other hand, realized that her matchmaking attempts had not ended in disaster for Harriet. As the news of Harriet's engagement spread, the residents of Highbury expressed various opinions. While some were genuinely happy for the couple, others, particularly Mr. and Mrs. Elton, were less enthusiastic. The Eltons, having their own opinions about class and social standing, disapproved of the match. Despite the unexpected developments in Harriet's love life, Emma and Mr. Knightley continued to plan their own future together, looking forward to their upcoming marriage and shared life at Hartfield. And so, Emma and Mr. Knightley's wedding was a joyful and happy occasion. The simplicity of the ceremony and the genuine happiness of the couple stood in contrast to the grandeur that Mrs. Elton may have expected. The stolen chickens incident, while a concern for Mr. Woodhouse, inadvertently helped expedite the wedding plans. The need for a reliable man at Hartfield in the absence of John and Isabella gave Mr. Woodhouse a practical reason to agree to the October wedding. The novel concludes with Emma and Mr. Knightley entering into a blissful and contented marriage. The journey that began with Emma's misguided matchmaking attempts and self-discovery reached its destination in the union of two characters who complemented each other well. The narrative concludes with the sentiment that true happiness is found in genuine connections, love, and understanding. Emma's growth, self-awareness, and eventual happiness with Mr. Knightley mark the culmination of her transformative journey in Jane Austen's Emma.